I'd like to first of all start off with a, a very kind of general question, a question that, that keeps recurring certainly when I talk, and that's the example of Toyota that you use in your book, uh, Command and Control, and it's the issue that we should always follow what Toyota do. That's what management should be doing, is looking for the benchmarking of Toyota, the systems that Toyota put in, that we should all be copying what Toyota do. Do you have any kind of... <coughs> yeah, I, yeah, I just wouldn't put it that way. Um, we certainly shouldn't copy uh, what they do. Um, I think the important thing is to say this, that um, the Toyota production system it represents a fundamental challenge to management beliefs. Um, it's, uh, it's a pull system, not a push system. Um, it's an economic legend in its own lifetime. Market capitalization of Toyota outstrips the next four motor manufacturers. This year they're going to be number one. In Japan, um, you place your order, they make your car, uh, and then you pay your money, and that takes five days. This is phenomenal. Incredible. Yeah. Um, what's important about all of this is that most managers don't have a scooby, as they say in Edinburgh, about how the hell they do that. Mm. Most managers don't recognise that the Toyota system is a challenge to some current beliefs about how you design and manage work. So I, I wouldn't say we should copy it. I would say we should pay a lot of attention to it and we should learn mm. from what they're doing. But you won't learn from visiting. I mean, we did that in the 70s, you know, plain loads of businessmen gone, went over to Japan, saw what they were doing and came back and said, oh, this is quality schemes, this is uh, suggestion schemes, this is you know, small groups solving problems. Well, they didn't see what was behind all of that, yeah. a different way of thinking about the design and management of work. Yeah. Is that what you talk about in your book, you talk about unlearning? Rather than learning, you talk about <coughs> this idea that you've got to break down your concepts, be critical and then yeah. they start to... Yeah, well, you think about it this way. We teach our managers right through from business schools that organizations are top-down functional hierarchies that you separate decision making from work that the managers make decisions and set targets and standards and service levels and they measure people's activity and the job of management is manage people manage budgets and we believe they all believe that you've got to unlearn that um, what the toyota system teaches us is instead of working top down you work outside in Instead of separating decision making from work, you integrate it with work, gives you more control than the other system ever did. Instead of using arbitrary measures like targets and standards, you use real measures derived from the work. Yeah. Those measures are put in the hands of the workers, that's how you get good control of the work, and the job of management changes to act on the system. Right. Now, those ideas you cannot employ in a normal command and control business. You've got to unlearn command and control in order to put in a system's design. I remember in your talk in the, in the Wolverton slide um, in Wales, you talked about this idea of uh, a fundamental thinking problems with managers. Is, is this kind of fitting into this way where managers have a problem in the way they think and then, and this is how they should change, this is what they should get into in order to, to get that um, success and that perfection into their organisation? Mm, yeah, but it starts with recognising that they've got some problems in their thinking. Mm -hmm. And you know what, you know, the Wolverton challenge. Um, the best you can get in a presentation like that is to get them curious. Yes. If you really want to get them to understand, then you've got to give them work to do in their own system where they discover that it's their thinking that's kind of part of the problem. Right. You know, so if you take, say with a service, simple service design idea, um, you know, service managers grow up with the idea that service management is all about uh, how much work is there to, to do, how many people have they got and how long do they take. Now, I know that's fundamentally stupid, <laughs> but they don't. Now, if I stand up in a room and say, that's fundamentally stupid, they think I'm weird mm. at best, or, you know, fuck at worst. <laughs> but if I take, if I give them work to do, they'll start understanding what's wrong with those ideas. And the first bit of work would be, well, let's get out and listen to calls. Let's start understanding the nature of demand into the system. Let's break these demands into value and failure. Mm. And they'll learn maybe there's 40, 50, 60% failure demand predictably hitting their system. So their first idea in that paradigm of how much work is there to do is not, not a helpful idea yeah. because there's an awful lot of work coming in here that we treat as work which we shouldn't treat as work we should treat it we should work on the system to turn it off yeah. um, uh, similarly they they think because of this core paradigm they've got to manage the activity of the workers and how many things do you do in an hour no 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 what Deming teaches us and 
it's true is that 95% of the variation in workers' performance in the system has got nothing to do with work. Now, mm. if I stand up and say that in a room, they'll think I'm an idiot. Mm. But if I give them work to do where they discover that the major cause of variation in performance are in the system and have got nothing to do with the worker, they'll come back with a eureka moment. Yeah. 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 They think um, that you should manage f uh, functions with budgets. Again, you know, we talked about that earlier. That's not a clever idea. But if I give them work to do, they'll start appreciating that the true costs of any service or anything else are end-to-end. -end. Yes. But they've never managed end-to-end -end costs. So it's only by giving them things to do that they can start undoing their current thinking. John, so um, we, we mentioned this idea about, about strategy, etc. What about the idea then of using tools such as Six Sigma and quality excellence and um, and all these kind of fads that managers take on board in order to kind of help improve their organisation? I think the problem with all of these things, well, the, the biggest problem with all of these things is they're essentially imbued with the same kind of corporate command and control Excellent. philosophy. Right. You know, I mean, six, let's start with Six Sigma. I mean, I regard Six Sigma as TQM on steroids. You know, more training, more reporting, hierarchies of belts. You know, to get to be a master black belt, you've probably got to have eight to nine weeks training, and most of it is in tools. Yeah. Uh, well, that won't help you. I mean, Ono said, never codify a method, never write tools. It's how you think about a problem that matters. And the, so, you know, you can move from Six Sigma to lean, so called. Remember, Ono didn't call it lean, he didn't call it anything. He refused to call it anything because if you start calling it something, people will think it comes in a box. Well, of course, what happened was Americans called the Toyota production system lean, so it's created a market for lean tools. And, um, as you know, if you've read all my stuff, the lean tools developed in manufacturing don't work in service design, but the tool heads will tell you they will. Yeah. Well, of course, they're tool heads. Yeah. You know, they're looking for something to stick their tool on. They don't know how to conceptualize a problem. Um, my mission in life is to help managers get their thinking right about how to define their problems. That's the biggest issue. Once you've got that right, the rest is easy. Yeah. It's not a tools issue. But you see, it also, there's another dimension to this. Command and control managers are attracted by the notion that they ain't got to learn anything, that the way they currently see the world is the right way to see the world, and I wish that, you know, how do we get the bloody people to do something? Well, so they're, they're easy prey for people selling tools. Yeah. Why don't I sell you a bunch of my tools and we'll train all these people to do the things that you want done? Mm. But actually, the things that you want done are the wrong things. And so they're going back to Six Sigma, it starts with define. So who defines the problem? Mm. The current thinking. Yeah. So you get loads of energy and effort placed on the wrong things mm. because it's the thinking that's got to change. So TQM, Six Sigma, uh, lean tools don't change the system. And the big prize is change the system. And you can only change the system if you're prepared to change the way you think. So, you know, it's like the fish rots from the head. You know, I've, I, when Deming taught me that um, targets are a stupid idea, they cause some optimization in systems, I got it immediately, understood it. Um, most managers, of course, don't understand it and don't believe it. And I would often stop when I'm working with managers and say to them, you know, could you could just help me out here. Um, how do you set a target? Teach me, I don't know. And of course, what I've learned is that there is no reliable method for setting a target. You know, they say things like, well, that's what you did last year, plus or minus 5%. Yes, yes, well, yes. if your system's got 50% waste in it, that's pretty dumb. It's not a reliable idea. And they've got this idea of stretch. You know, what that means, I don't know, but it's diametrically opposed to the experience-based idea. Um, you know, and if I, if I showed them some of the results with, that the systems think is achieved, I mean, you know, we were talking only about a financial services company, yeah. where, you know, they had a... They had a stretch target to reduce their cost by 5%. They employed a systems design and reduced their cost by 40%. They never would have set that as a target. So stretch is not a reliable method. Right. Um, government people seem to like this idea of ask the customer. It's a bloody stupid idea. Because <laughs> you ask the customer and they dream up all kinds of things that might be nice for you to do. And you end up creating a rod for your back. Yeah. What customers want from uh, local authorities, public services, is services that work. Mm. That's all. Mm. So what you need to do is understand demand and design the services against demand. They think you're bloody mustard. Um, so, you know, they're, 
there, so there's no reliable method for setting a target. That's the first thing people need to understand. The second thing people need to understand is whenever you use targets or any other arbitrary measure, you drive waste into your system. Mm -hmm. And that's not a maybe, that's a guaranteed always. The trouble is command and control thinkers don't know how to look to find out. Mm -hmm. The very measures keep them blind. And the third and the most important thing to understand, this is the exciting thing, is that once you learn how to use measures derived from the work in the hands of people who do the work, you achieve a level of performance you never would have set as a target. Mm.